What's up vapors? Nick here is for Spin Fuel's Daily Vape TV. Today is Fresh Build Friday and as always we're going to be building a brand new coil for all you guys out there. This one's definitely for you high wattage regulated devices. Uh, if you have a Hexom or an IPv3 or a Segeli 150, anything that can pump out more than 100 watts, you're definitely going to want to pay attention to this one because this one's definitely going to be for you. Uh, so I also learned a lot at VCC Tampa. During my building classes, I had a lot of people questioning my wicking technique, but I really want to focus on the wicking for this one and uh, make sure you guys know everything you can about how to get your wicks to work just right. Uh, so I'll be doing a little bit of, of a more in-depth on that aspect, but stay tuned. Right after this, we'll be going down into the close-up portion of the video. So yeah, stay tuned. Marty from Bumblefrog, shout out to Spin Fuel Magazine, it's where it at, check them out on the web. Alright, so this is a general idea of what kind of tools you're going to need for this. Uh, we have our atomizer on top of our uh, ohm reader, pair of pliers, wire cutters, I have this little lovely little coil jig here that I'm going to be showing off, uh, screwdriver, pair of tweezers, and our canthal wire, which we're going to be using 24 gauge today. Uh, we have a little bit of Japanese cotton and some scissors. Um, so yeah, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is just take about a foot of this canthal and we're going to cut off a piece. Alright, we'll set that aside. Now we're going to take our piece of wire and cut it in half. So I just line up the ends and just snip what I think is about halfway. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to move around my tools real quick and get out my coil jig. And today we're going to be using the 1 8 inch bit. And I hope you all watched my review of this little guy here. The uh, revolver coil jig. This thing is awesome. I use it on a daily basis at the shop and it comes in handy quite often. So first you're going to just wrap two standard micro coils, six wraps of this 24 gauge. And look at that, we have just enough left over for what I'm about to do next. Uh, a lot of people do center coiled builds, uh, and I really like those, especially with a dual center post like the uh, plume veil clone that I have here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just grab a little bit away from the end of the coil here, and I'm just going to grab it with my pliers and do a 90 degree bend. Just like that. So this is what you should have so far. And if you're wrapping around just a regular drill bit, you know, it should look just the same except your normal uh, positive lead would just be coming straight out that way. Alright, next thing we're going to do is just straighten our wire out so it fits in our negative uh, lead or negative connection. So we're going to grab it a little bit away from what we just bent and do our final turn here try not to mess up that turn. There we go. I'll show you a little close up of that. So that's where we're at with the uh, centering of this coil. And then when you take it off of here, you just press it against the, uh, the jig to straighten out that positive a little bit. And there we go, we're ready to install. And I'm just going to repeat this process and build our second coil. So there we go, we have our two coils ready to go, and we're ready to install them on our RDA. So let's go ahead and get that ready. Back off the camera. There we go. So just like always, make sure your screws are loose enough to get your wire through, and just I, w I like to use the opposite side of the positive connection 
uh, it just makes it easier to center that coil a little bit nicer. And we'll just feed this wire through here. There we go. And as you can see, it makes it really easily centered. So it's pretty much ready to go. And there's not much cleanup you have to do after the fact. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down and clip off the excess wire. So now we're ready to install our second coil. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. And the reason I love these dual center post RDAs is because it makes it so much easier to install two coils uh, without the you know fuss of getting those two strands of wire to go through the single positive post. And this one is a little bit messy, but I think we can work with it. And again, just clip off the excess wire. Just be careful you don't clip off the, uh, the other coil. There we go. I'm going to insert my uh, jig right back into it and straighten it a little bit. And that's what you should have so far if you're building along with me. And I'm going to do a quick resistance check. And there you go, 0.28. Hopefully you can see that. There you go. Uh, once I fire this, it should jump up to about 0.3. Uh, usually these builds will come out to anywhere from 0.28 all the way up to 0.32, which is perfect. That's exactly what we're shooting for. So let's go ahead and uh, put this thing on our mod and see where we're at. All right, so we have our atomizer on top of our mod now. We're, today we're going to be using the Sigeli 100 Plus, uh, which I will have a review on coming very soon, so make sure you uh, stay tuned for that. And hopefully you guys can see this, but we are at 0.3. Uh, I did just quickly pre-fire it, but it's at 5.4 volts, which is pretty darn high. So let's see, uh, see if we can get this thing to behave. And they're lighting up pretty evenly. I'm just going to pinch the coils a little bit, making sure not to hit that fire button when I, I have my tweezers on there. And what you want to do is you let the coils cool while you're pinching them, and that will uh, keep them a little bit tighter. And always double check your screws when you're uh, heating up your coils because that canthal can change shape. And from time to time, you're going to have to just stick whatever you wrapped around back through and straighten out your coils a little bit because as those coils heat up, they will change shape a little bit. So just keep an eye on them. They're glowing bright, firing evenly. 
and at the same time. So I think we're ready to wick. Alright, so our next step is going to be wicking, and with this particular build, I like to use a double thickness of cotton, so just about that much right there will do just fine. And what I'm going to do is just rip this in half, and hopefully I'll be able to use half on each coil. So, first thing you want to do is just take the tip and start to roll the whole thing but very loosely you don't want this too tight and you want to just roll the very very tip of it tight like that and that way you can get that part through the coil easily without crushing the rest of it like that just try to keep this this end as fluffy as possible and you want it tight but not too tight inside the coil and when you get it to where you want it you want to back it off just a little bit so both of those ends stay fluffy hopefully you guys can see get a close up of that next thing you want to do is cut it right at the edge of the deck and most people tell me I'm crazy for doing this because it's not enough cotton. But I think it's just enough. It doesn't fill up the well of the, the deck too much and it provides a nice airflow. Uh, because I don't tuck my cotton underneath my coil. So the next thing I do is I fluff it up extra fluffy. Using a screwdriver you can also just use your finger. Uh, usually I'll use the flat tip side so I can break up those fibers. And you want to try to get this stuff as fluffy as possible. Just like that. And notice how there's a nice airspace underneath that coil and I'll show you once we get the uh, whole thing juiced up and everything in a little bit more detail and I'm just gonna go ahead and wick the other side so as you can see I have my cotton all nice and fluffed up and one thing you can really do to to get rid of any excess uh, little fibers that are hanging on just blow on your cotton a little bit and it'll uh, fluff itself up a little bit more. All right, so today we're gonna be using some Captain Jacks by Moon Mountain. Let's get that in the shot, there we go. Uh, I got this at VCC. I do wanna give a big shout out to Moon Mountain for uh, finding me some sample bottles for me to try, and I will have a review of uh, there are three different lines coming up soon. Uh, I've got so much stuff to tell you guys, so make sure you stay tuned to my channel. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Give me a like. Go check out my page on Facebook and Instagram and all that good stuff. So right now I'm just doing a quick drizzle of juice right across the top of the coil and over the top of the cotton. And I'm not doing a full juice yet because I haven't even tucked it into the deck. So. Uh, this, is, this is the part that I normally just kind of speed over in my uh, build videos, but I want to show you today uh, exactly what's going on. And basically what I'm doing is I get that top part wet so it sticks a little bit. So when I pull it down, I'm not trying to crush it. I'm just trying to tuck it just barely into the deck. Um, and it'll stick to the deck a little bit better when it has a little bit of juice on there. So that's why I'm giving it that quick dab and I'm basically forming little globes that's what I call them my little spheres if you will 
and you just want to barely touch it. You don't want to really crush it too much because if you crush it, it'll never find its shape again. So just barely caress it. And I'm trying to leave that air channel underneath the coil, which I'll show you in just another second here. When I get these two all tucked in. And I mean, from my experience at the shop, you know, building five, ten mods a day at least uh, gives you a lot of practice. And practice always makes perfect. So here we go. Almost done. So, I think I successfully avoided crushing my cotton there. And as you can see, it leaves a nice wide open air channel underneath the coil. And we do that so air can just kind of move through freely through your atomizer. And when you're vaping at 100 watts, you don't want it too hot. Um, I mean, especially for me personally, I don't really like a hot vape. So, this will keep it nice and cool for me. And, uh... Yeah, let's go ahead and do a full juice. We'll get the uh, chimney back on. And we'll be ready to go. So just like always, we're going to line up that airflow right in front of our coils. You want it pretty square on. There we go. And... I tend to over juice because I do a dry, a quick burn before I uh, put my top cap on and before I ha take a vape off of it. So, yeah, I might waste juice. I know I waste a lot of cotton, but the results kind of speak for themselves. So, let's do a quick burn on this thing. Wow. Let's back off the camera and show you. And there you go. I mean, that's epic vapor production there. Let's go back to the main screen and we'll have a quick vape. All right, so that was the close-up portion of the video. I uh, hope you guys got some good info on exactly what is going on with this build and why it works at 100 watts. I really like the 1 8 inch coils for regulated devices, especially with the higher wattages. Uh, wicking is very crucial when it comes to higher wattages as well because the last thing you want to get is a dry hit at 150 watts. Uh, so let's take a few rips off of this thing and I'll uh, let you know what I think. Tons of vapor. Tons of vapor. Dense dense clouds and I can also attribute that to the juice as well. This is uh, maximum VG e-liquid so there's uh, you know no no shortage of clouds on this build and right now I'm vaping at 100 watts 5.4 volts um, and this thing is absolutely chucking. Uh, it is a bit warm for me personally and the juice that I'm trying today is 6 milligram which is above what I normally vape now. I drop down to 3 so uh, I can only take short rips off of it, but as far as the coil itself and the wicking and everything, it's spot on. Um, I have the Plume Veil clone wide open with this Fusions Mods fog hat on top. And if you like airflow, you, they can add extra airflow. And I'll be doing a review of these as well soon, so stay tuned for that. So that about does it for the video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want to see me do a particular build video, just write me a comment down below and I'll try to get to it as soon as I can. Lots more coming from VCC as far as juice reviews, product reviews, everything like that. Uh, as for right now, I'm just going to have another quick vape and sign out. Alright, don't forget to stay active in the vaping community. If you want to help our vaping cause, check out Gasa.org, The Vaping Militia, Safada, any, any advocacy group that helps our cause is definitely a good one. I have the links in the description below. 
So make sure you check out them as well as www.spinfuel.com for lots more of my videos as well as Smoke and Joey and Spin Fuel official videos. Uh, they did some coverage on the VCC event as well, so make sure you check those videos out too. And as always, vape on. Yeah.